They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're cooking outside tonight. We have so much good stuff for you. Fresh stuff out of the garden. The weather has been cooperating. It hadn't been too terribly hot. So we're going to do some outdoor cooking tonight. We're going to show you some sides to do on the grill right up front. And a little later, we're going to do some cowboy campfire cooking. But first up, we got all these great vegetables coming on. Now you can put anything on the egg, anything on the grill, fruit-wise, vegetable-wise. But I've got a few things that I really, really like. And I'm going to start tonight with cabbage. Now look. That came right out of the garden. Is that not beautiful? Big old pretty head of cabbage. Bugs got a little bit of it. I get most of it. You know what? I put absolutely no pesticides on that. And they, got, they eat mostly on the outside. And I got a big Vidalia onion. Now, you can do as many of these as you want. But the principle's the same on both of the recipes. I'm going to take this, strip it down, take all the outside leaves off, turn it upside down, core it. I'm going to take that core out, not all the way through, just big enough to stick about a three quarters of a stick of butter into that. Before I put the butter in, I'm going to mash up a piece of chicken bouillon. And I'm going to mash that up and get that going in there. I'm going to come back with some seasonings and some more butter. And the Vidalia onion, just about the same principle. I'm going to take a big, tasty Vidalia onion. They're so sweet and wonderful. I'm going to core that out. I'm going to take some butter. I'm going to pack into that space. Then I'm going to come back with some Dizzy Pig. I'm going to put that on top of that. I'm going to wrap them both up in aluminum foil, set my egg for about 350 or grill if you're using a grill, and I'm going to go about two hours. Now, let me tell you what. When this comes out, even people that I know that hate cabbage absolutely loved this cabbage. It gets nice and soft. It's got a little smoky flavor from the grill. And all those butter, mm, 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 it's really, really good. And the onion, you can have that along with any side. It is delicious. All right, we've got our egg right up to around 350, where I want it. I'm going to set the cabbage on there. I'm going to set the onion on there. Close her down, let her rip about two, two and a half. They can even go three hours as long as, you, as long as you watch them. Just when it starts getting soft, you know it's done. These should be well done and ready to go. Ooh, look at that onion. That's not hot or anything. Yeah, smell that. I mean, right now. This reminds me of Jiffy Pop popcorn. Unwrapping the yummy goodness. Now, look at here. Look what I'm talking about. Oh, my. That smells absolutely heavenly. And look at his little next door neighbor over here. Oh, you ought to smell it. Now look at the consistency of that onion. Look at that, it just falls apart. 
And oh my goodness, the smells coming off of that. Mm, mm, mm. Now the cabbage, as you can just see, just falls apart. It's so tender. And you can smell all those flavors together in there. Oh my goodness. I'm just peel it off and eat it. I'm gonna try this, nigga. Mm, mm, mm. Now you talk about a wonderful side. That's good. No good. Those onions, man, if you're making steak, you can cut those out and put over top of it. Oh my, you can't hardly ask for anything better. It's delicious. The only thing you could ask for, if there's anything that could be any better, is just a tiny bit of music. Like, maybe some more on music. That would be good. I think so. Hi, I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're the Moron Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. We played a big fire up in Ohio every year, and there's a fellow bringing an old time airplane up there. And for 10 bucks, you fly around the county. And there's a, a couple up there named Homer and Martha, and they they farmers and they filthy rich, but Martha roost the roost and she is tight with her money. Well, I, every year Homer stand there and said, "Boy, I sure would like flying an airplane." Martha said, "Yeah, but it costs ten bucks, and ten bucks is ten bucks." The next year they come back again. Homer said, "I sure would like flying an airplane." Martha said, "Yeah, but it costs ten bucks, and ten bucks is ten bucks." Well, this past year we was up there and there they stood arguing over at 10 bucks. No pilot went over and said, look, every year y'all stand here and argue over that money. But I'll tell you what to do, I'll take you up, fly you around. Won't cost you nary a penny under one condition. They said, what's that? He said, you can't say nary word the whole time we up there. Homer said, boy, I can do that, get flying that airplane. Martha said, I can do it, save 10 bucks. He gets them in the airplane, takes off, he flips. Flops, no dive. They ain't said nothing. He landed that airplane. He looked over at Homer said, I can't believe y'all went that whole flight and never said nary word. Homer said, I started to say something. Martha fell out, but 10 bucks is 10 bucks. Yeah. Mmm. Cabbage is good. Another side I like on just about everything is horseradish. You know where horseradish comes from? I bet you Bobby Joe Alice does. We're at 
Bobby Joe's secret garden. I don't know. <laughs> Puts mine to shame, but it looks beautiful. I know you spend a lot of time out here. Mm -hmm. But you know what? This is a quick tip. A lot of people eat horseradish. Right. They yeah. like it on their steak. They like it on this, that, and the other. But a lot of people don't know where it comes from. Why don't you tell us what this okay. is right here? This is horseradish here, and it comes back each year. You don't have to replant it. And you use the root system. That's the only part you use. The rest of it's just wasted. So you just dig the root up, the root. wash it yeah. off, or put yeah. it in a food processor, and there's what you got. Right. Let's see what it looks like. That's the small one. So you just take that, take that, and put it in the food processor. Peel the, the peel the hide off. Of it. off. Yeah, right. And then drop in the food, food processor, and you, and then then mix it with whatever, maybe salad dressing, mayonnaise, or. I wonder how I got the name horseradish. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. Let me take a whiff of that. Yeah. <laughs> By golly, there it is. <laughs> you know, it does have that the smell of a radish yeah. to some yeah, degree. Yeah. Take that, put it through a food processor, and you get yourself some right. horseradish. Exactly right. I might use that tonight, okay. some steak I'm thinking. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Now, folks have been asking for it, and here it is. Another cowboy campfire cooking segment. You know what? This time I found a little cowgirl to help me do some of my cooking. As we continue our cowboy campfire cooking series, I found me a cowgirl. And you know what? She's gonna make us something over in that lodge dish right now. Tell us what you're making today. Well, you know, usually we make zucchini bread. We're gonna try muffins. And so let's see what we got. I got all the ingredients here. One cup of zucchini, and I've kind of peeled and shredded that. I got a cup of sugar, one cup of flour, half a cup of raisins. Yum, I like my raisins. And these are all my spices. I kind of put them all together. A teaspoon and a half of cinnamon half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon baking soda, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Throw those in. It's a little bit of cinnamon, soda, it's all kinds of stuff. We're gonna put two eggs. And half a cup of oil. And that's Is this it. vegetable oil? Yes, vegetable oil. And the one last ingredient? That I almost forgot, we're gonna do half a teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm just gonna kinda guess here. There you go. Can't have too much vanilla. That up. And I think that's, see how simple that was? Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and fill our muffin pan. You know, we recently we had a show where everybody was asking about what to do with zucchini. What in the world can I do with zucchini? Everybody's got zucchini coming out of their ears. Here's just one more way to use your zucchini recipe. And I'm going to go ahead and push that out in the middle of the fire. Now, while we got the zucchini muffins going, Let's get back and start our cabbage soup. All right, now you remember earlier that beautiful cabbage that we took off the egg? Now, so simple and so good. If you like cabbage, if you don't, I bet you'd even like this. What we've done is taken a pound of venison burger. This is last year's buck. Now, obviously, you can use hamburger if you choose to do so. We've taken a pound of that and we've we took the rest of that uh, Vidalia onion. Right. You had almost all of it. Popped it right in there. Now, here's the thing about cooking on the fire that I love. You can make it as quick or as long as you want. If some of your stuff is already prepared, you're going to go that much quicker. The onion's right. done. The cabbage is done. Right. And you just canned... Some tomatoes. Some tomatoes. <laughs> Two days ago. Two days ago. This is so simple. Pound of hamburger, a Vidalia onion, and again, you can take this stuff and you can cook it a little bit at a time. Or, in our case, we took leftover cabbage that's already cooked, an onion, 
beef broth. I'm gonna put a little beef broth in. We'll keep adding it. And we're gonna put a couple cups of water as well. I'm gonna put the whole can in there. How's that? The whole there you go. Beef broth. Because that's what's for dinner. Now, we're gonna take the cabbage. The remainder of that cabbage and as much, you know, you can put as much or little as you want in there. We love cabbage. And this being that it's already kind of cooked. Oh, <laughs> it smells good already. The combination of that stuff right there in itself. Now you're gonna put some... My spices. This is a little bit of garlic, salt, and salt. Okay. Just to give it a little flavor. A little pepper. Pepper. And I like pepper. Nice and then Or sugar. a lot, in our case. I like a lot of pepper. Some sugar? Yeah, and just to taste, and I put quite a bit in. If you want to stir that out and taste it, see what you think. Let's get going here, and the thing about it is, Cooking outside is just common sense cooking. Taste as you go along. Watch to make sure nothing's burning. See where your flame is. See how much of a boil you've got going. And you can't hardly mess it up. It's no different from cooking inside. We're gonna bring this to boil and let it get all comfortable together. Taste it a bit. What do you think? Mm. Oh man. All right, now the great thing about cooking outdoors is there's something that happens when you get that smoke rolling. Now we're leaving the top off. And we'll let this go a half hour, 45 minutes. And it's already got that wonderful taste of the smoke. We put the venison in there early. It was done immediately with the onions. Everything came together quick. If you got a bunch of starving people around a campfire, here's something that comes together really quick, really easy. Check make sure it's there. Pretty good. Maybe a little sugar? What do you think? To taste? Tiny bit, but boy, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. And there's your venison, cabbage, cowboy cooking, yummy stuff. Now see? You're off a pretty cowgirl. Aw, sweet. <laughs> Let's go back and check our zucchini muffins and see how dessert's coming along. Now cooking out of doors. It's such a wonderful experience. You know, you're out there, you listen to all the crickets, all the outdoor animals. You smell the smoke. That adds flavor to your food. There's a lot of common sense involved. Now, you can use charcoal. I had this built, and I can put charcoal underneath it, and I can put a wood fire beneath it. You can use something as small as this that you can take out of a smoker or a grill, and you can do the same thing I'm doing with a small bag of charcoal and then add wood as you feel like you need to do so. I had this one made special by Freddie and Jay, some friends of mine. And it's just good common sense when you see that things are getting done, don't let them get too brown. It's no different. It's maybe a little more labor intensive, but how do you think our ancestors did it? Well, you're looking at it when they're out there on the prairie moving west. They had their sweets, they had their soups, they had everything in the world they liked and you had to cook over an open fire. It's a little bit of common sense, a little bit of work, a little bit of watching. You can do all kinds of things over your cowboy campfire. Now for the last little bit, they're getting done. I'm gonna bring this big skillet, I'm gonna put it over the top of it, and I'm gonna let that heat roll down around the top of it. And that's the last little bit we need to get that done. All right, now, I took my pan and covered them up for that last little bit to get the tops done. And voila, look at that. Those look good. Now we let these go for about half hour and 45 minutes and I kept watching them and turning them and making sure that uh, they weren't getting burnt while Nikki was feeding the pigs and painting the roof. That's right. <laughs> now let's, uh, Let's get one out here and take a look at it. Boy, they look nice and moist. They're gonna come right out, looks like. And we oil the pan ahead of time. Uh-oh, that looks mighty good. Now we're gonna let these cool down, obviously. But boy, a little slab of butter on top of that. Get now look at that. Oh, looks good. That's our zucchini muffins over an open fire. And let me tell you what, you can cook just about anything you want. Oh my. That looks good, can you try it? Yeah, I wanna try it, don't lose your mind. Not very nice. Oh man, the smell and the, the texture is perfect. 
it's hard to believe. Now the last little bit, you'll notice that they were done everywhere on top. And then I took a skillet and put on top of that upside down. That let that heat come around on the top and it finished them up so nicely. Here, that's your special recipe, you try it first. Those look perfect. I'm pretty good. No, those aren't pretty good, they're awesome. Cowboy campfire cooking, zucchini muffin. Yeah. Right there on top of the fire. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah, did your stuff like that. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Very good. Now we've been following this bee process from day one. Now I've got my big box now and they're busily gathering pollen so I can hopefully have some this year. If not, I got next year. But the most important part is when you finally get to that final step is to cap your beeswax, put it on the slinger, and watch what happens. All right, now you have taken off the top of your hives, which you call the the super, uh, supers. The supers. Mm -hmm. Now he's capping it. He's just taking that wax off the top where they've sealed it. Right. Then we're in the final stages right here. That all that stuff that you've done all year long to get the you know to get to this stage. The last stage being right over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. He's capping it. He hands you the frame. You put it in this thing, which we call the slinger. The slinger. Uh, if you don't take the cap off, what you do is you'll throw the center of it out. Gotcha. So you've got to take the capping off. And that just loosens everything up so it can roll so on out there. Roll on out, yes. So at that point, when you crank this thing up and it goes on around, that honey just slings out and lays in the bottom of this. Then it goes through that filter. Yeah, that's a strainer. It's a two-stage strainer. Okay. The smallest is about 8,000, so it's the very bottom one. Gotcha. And it pulls the majority of the cappings that you left from this process. Then you go over to here and you've got cheesecloth. We run it through cheesecloth. That's the last thing we run through is the cheesecloth. And that pulls about everything. At which point she takes that and strains that through. It's about a pound and a half at each jar. Pound and a half of absolutely wonderful, beautiful, natural, sweet. You know, they've done studies on this stuff. It keeps germs from growing. It, never spoils. There's a, a tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide in there. It's the health benefits, I think they're just now starting to understand. Yeah, they're doing a lot more studies now than they used to. And they're finding that if you take a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of honey per day, they're finding for circulation, for joint pain, sore throats, allergies, anything that ails you. And that right there is how it's done. Now, it's got to be a pretty satisfying point in the game at this point where you bottle it up take it to a store or take it to some folks and do some trading? Yes, it is. Finally, the last stage after you go through all the process of maintaining the bees, mowing around the bees, there's a lot to it. Getting stung a few times? I've been stung since we took the honey so far. You haven't? No, sir. I have took uh, 17 boxes and I ain't been stung not once. Did you wear your suit? Uh, yes. Good for you, because I'm going to always wear my suit. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, did he get stung in it? Yes, he did, right after we got through. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Just once? Just once. Ladies arm right on the bed of the truck, wham, right on the floor. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> well, uh, I tell you what, I want to thank you and Alan showing us how this whole thing is done. This is really quite the procedure, and we've got a lot of response to folks who are watching the show who really enjoy you letting us into your world here. They like watching nature happen. They like watching the old-fashioned way, seeing things like this. People like it. So oh, thank you very good. much. That's good. All right, a lot of folks are asking about our recipes. Now, we post those as soon as the show is off the air. So remember, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Go there, look at some stuff you've never seen before. You can check out all our former segments. And if you click on recipes, we have posted our recipes there. Easy to get to. Hey, come check out the crew. We'll be in Winchester. Winchester, the last weekend of August, Saturday and Sunday at the Daniel Boone Pioneer Festival. Hope to see you there. And remember, check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Till next week, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. 
See you next week. Special thanks to Bayou Bluegrass Catering, Kentucky Beer Cheese, and Weisenberger Mill.